I call upon those whom I address to stand up for the nobility of labor. It is heaven's great ordinance for human improvement. Let not that great ordinance be broken down. What do I say? It is broken down, and it has been broken down for ages. Let it then be built up again, here, if anywhere, on these shores of a new world, of a new civilization. But how, I may be asked, is it broken down? Do not men toil, it may be said. They do indeed toil, but they too generally do it because they must. Many submit to it as, in some sort, a degrading necessity, and they desire nothing so much on earth as escape from it. They fulfill the great law of labor in the letter, but break it in the spirit. Fulfill it with the muscle, but break it with the mind. To some field of labor, mental or manual, every idler should fasten as a chosen and coveted theater of improvement. But so is he not impelled to do under the teachings of our imperfect civilization. On the contrary, he sits down, folds his hands, and blesses himself in his idleness. This way of thinking is the heritage of the absurd and unjust feudal system under which serfs labored and gentlemen spent their lives in fighting and feasting. It is time that this opprobrium of toil were done away. Ashamed to toil art thou? Ashamed of thy dingy workshop and dusty labor field? Of thy hard hands, scarred with service more honorable than that of war? Of thy soiled and weather-stained garments, on which Mother Nature has embroidered midst sun and rain, midst fire and steam, her own heraldic honors? Ashamed of these tokens and titles? And envious of the flaunting robes of imbecile idleness and vanity? It is treason to nature. It is impiety to heaven. It is breaking heaven's great ordinance. Toil, I repeat, toil, either of the brain or of the heart or of the hand, is the only true manhood, the only true nobility.